a conclusive breakdown of Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. What is the meaning of head and hair, white like wool? Welcome to the Watchman Report with Walter Lovett. This week's teaching piggybacks off the recent unveiling of black iconography by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Let's dive right in. In the book of Revelation, we are given a hint about the color of Yahusha HaMashiach, but there appears to be two contradicting accounts caused by the term head and hair, white like wool. Consequently, some say Revelation 14, verse 14 through 15, was saying that he is black, while others are saying he was white. Tonight's question is, does it matter what race the Messiah was? Now, most will say it does not matter. However, we are given the Ruach, which is the spirit of truth, to lead us into all truth. Not some truth, but all truth. John chapter 16, verse 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Now, that means that all truth matters. That is complemented by this verse in Revelation, which more or less tells us that if we make or even love a lie, we cannot enter into the kingdom. Revelation 22.15 says, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So in order to solve this problem, we must find out the truth and love the truth as to what Hamashiach looks like. Otherwise, by brushing it aside, we would be guilty of loving a lie. So what does head and hair, white like wool, really mean? Scripture says his feet were like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Tonight, we're going to resolve this question quite easily. However, in verse 14, it gives what appears to be a contradiction. Revelation 1.14 says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Head and hairs, white like wool. That's the key bit that everybody seems to be hung up about, right? Some have believed, commented, and even questioned They've said his head and his hairs were white like wool, which being part of his head could also mean white. To break this down in layman's terms, people use this to imply that if his head and his hairs are white or were white, then surely the skin of his face is also white. Now, this is an important matter that should be brought out in deeper truths. And it's an important biblical matter is what I should say. So let's explore the light of his countenance will give us some more insight on this. Let's go straight to the answer. His entire head was white because of the, of the light of his countenance shining like the sun. Hence, the head being white is not referencing his complexion, but rather the effect of his countenance shining like the sun. Here's a well-known verse that provides some further proof. Revelation 1.16 says, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in strength. Now, what does countenance mean? Countenance is actually a Greek word for opsis. Opsis. And that's taken from G3700, entry G3700 in the Strong's. It means proper or properly sight or to properly cite the act that is by implication the visage of an external show of appearance via countenance or face. There's three occurrence of this in the KJV total, okay? Simply put, it means his face. It was his face that was illuminated, not his whole body. Now let's go to another well-known passage in scripture, one of which is actually Christ's greatest miracle or one of his greatest miracles. It's called the Transfiguration. Matthew 17, 1 says, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them, bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Verse 2, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was as, as white as the light. 
So his face shone like the sun, the body of light at the transfiguration. This is what Yehuchanan, also known as John the Revelator, or John the Seer, saw in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. He saw Hamashiach's face, which shone like the sun, hence his face and his hair were white like snow. It does not mean that that was his actual complexion. Okay, so what is the true complexion of Hamashiach? That's the question. Let's dig a little bit deeper. Revelation, uh, let me not get ahead of myself. Let's look, dig a little bit deeper. From reading, we see his true complexion is shown on his feet where the illumination was not manifested. Revelation 1, 15, 16 says, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. You see, Hamashiach knew that if he did not show his feet to John so that he could bear a record for us today, and everyone would say that he was white in appearance according to what they deduced from Revelation 1.14. Now, by proxy, that would hide the truth too much in the end time and not allow the true Negro children of Israel in the end time to know that he was one of them, okay? So hiding, again, hiding. Psalms 83 talks about the conspiracy of the nations to hide who the children of Israel are, okay? This backs that up. Hence, the attempt to use Revelation 1.14, head and hairs white like wool, is to say he was a white person, okay? By saying that, you're feeding into the Psalms 83 conspiracy, right? But this proves that it's a false claim, okay? Now, you might ask, doesn't the passage hair white like wool only refer to the color? It's interesting that you ask that. Some try to say white like wool just refers to the color and not the texture. Well, that could be the case if you held Revelation 114 in isolation. However, Scripture proves Scripture, okay? Precept upon precept, line upon line. That's how you study the Bible. That's how you learn Scripture. Um, it's really um, the best way to really understand scripture. There's there's just there's no other way simply put, okay? Scripture proves scripture. Now we know that Hamashiach is the son of the most high and he is the image of the father, right? Here we have him being described as the image of the father in the New Testament in scripture. Colossians 1:15 says, "Who is the image of the invisible Elohim?" That's uh, uh, ancient Paleo-Hebrew for God, the firstborn of every creature. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature, or who is the image of the invisible God? Okay. You might ask, but what is the meaning of image? Okay, that's a good question. Entry number G1504 or 1504 is... Uh, icon, I hyphen K O N E. It means a likeness that is literally statue profile or figuratively representation or resemblance of an image. There's a total KG JV occurrence of 23. Simply put, Hamashiach looks like his father, like father, like son. You know that term? You know that? saying he looks just like his father. Now, if we were to see the Most High in the Spirit, guess what his hair would look like? The Most High being the Father. It's a title for the Father, okay? It, his hair would look exactly like his father. We can prove that scripturally. Let's read Daniel Chapter 7, verse 9 says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair, and the hair of his head, like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So if the father's hair 
looks just like pure wool, why wouldn't the sun's? The sun's hair texture would not be any different because they are the spinning image. Okay? Or he is, the son is the spitting image of the father. Okay? Scripture backs that up. To conclude this teaching tonight, Yahushua HaMashiach was and is referring to a Negro. What we call today a black man or an African American. Okay? If this teaching does not make that clear, then I don't know what to say. Um, this has been a, a sore spot for, for many years uh, with the, the Gentile church, especially the American Gentile church. Um, this is a topic that not many um, clergymen, pe pastors, preachers, apostles, teachers, you know, evangelists want to touch. They, they, they skate around this. They say color doesn't matter. Race doesn't matter. Ethnicity doesn't matter. And in terms of salvation, it doesn't. However, you cannot worship in spirit and truth if you're worshiping in a lie. And so that's what this is showing. That's what this teaching is really trying to bring out. It's a it's an uncomfortable topic, but it is a relevant, it's a point and poignant topic because of the season that we are in. Scripture talks about in Matthew 24, it talks about um ethanos being um or in the Greek it's ethanos or ethnos. In the KJV, it's nation against nation. It talks about nation or nationalities rising up against one another. It's in scripture for a reason. It's a huge issue. Not too many people want to tackle it. Not too many people want to really address it. But we have to address it. We have to get to the point to where we face this head on. Satan has done a wonderful bang up job of using race to single handedly dismantle the church. And when I say race, I really mean ethnicity, but the colloquial term for what the Bible calls tribes, we call race. Satan has used that to sow so much division and to sow, to sow so much information, or, or I should say disinformation about the end times. And it's time that we address it. It's time that we bring it to light and really explain and show what it is, break down these scriptures, precept upon precept, line upon line, so that people know what they are really up against. So we're going to continue this teaching um, uh, on another date. I want to talk to you uh, tomorrow about Jacob's trouble or the time of Jacob's trouble. We're going to revisit that teaching. And um, we have a really um, awesome Sabbath teaching lined out for you guys uh, that we're going to tackle and we're going to talk about before finally circling back and closing out the series about the uh, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and the Seven Seals. So for the Watchman Report, I'm Walter Lovett. Join me back here next time.